Thank you for your patience with us running a little bit late. Anyway, I think it's time for the third session. And uh, to your disappointment, I have to tell you that there won't be any opera for, to start the final, final, final round of discussions. But anyway, I'm very excited to uh, go to the next bit. Now we've heard, I like to, usual, I, I like to visualize these things uh, the way that, uh, you know, we've now seen you know, what's possible within the limits of uh, laws of nature. And usually, laws of men tend to limit those things down. So we will be talking about politics and policy, things that uh, limit what we can do within the sort of uh, limitations of natural laws of physics. And for this round, uh, we, have, uh, we have another excellent uh, moderator. Kirsty, I will hand, uh, you know, driver's seat to you and uh, step back and drink my coffee. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Lowry. Wow, what an amazing day it's been. I'm sorry that uh, I can't start this session with a song. Um, oh God, it was so wonderful. Um, we're so lucky. Uh, thanks, Eric, for that great session that we just had. Um, so uh, it's uh, my real pleasure now to introduce uh, three more really um, eminent and very interesting speakers on some topics that amazingly we, I don't think we've touched on yet. So in this session, we're going to be looking at um, topics from uh, uh, the, we'll be looking at advanced nuclear from the investor perspective, from the perspective of the customer. Uh, we're looking at uh, regulatory harmonization, which is, I think, one of, the, one of the issues that we've maybe touched on a little, but which we could really deep, you know, go into a bit more deeply in this session. Um, so I'll kick off by, first of all, uh, introducing Mr. Ville uh, Skinari, um, who's been a member of parliament uh, for Finland for the Social Democrat Party since 2015, and as a member of the Commerce Committee, partly responsible for energy issues in Finland. Uh, he was a semi-professional ice hockey player in the early 90s and has had a really extensive, impressive career in business uh, ranging from the UK and the Netherlands and Japan. And just speaking just a moment ago in the coffee break, um, I thought I had an interesting fact about ice hockey because uh, in the taxi on the way here this morning, our driver told us that when Finland won the ice hockey uh, world championships, uh, they celebrated in this hotel that we're in today, which is pretty cool. Um, but then I found out that actually uh, Mr. Skinari used to, uh, used to train at the, uh, at the ice hockey rink that I used to go to as a child. So <laughs> what a coincidence that was. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And regards from the House of Parliament, it's just about a mile towards the city centre. We have a normal day there, so unfortunately I need to be back before 4 o'clock. It's a que te televised questionnaire hour coming up. But thank you for the invitation. It's, I must say that it's one of my favorite topics today. It's energy, which is obviously something we are in charge at the um, Economic Committee in Finland. But also we're talking about the nuclear. And uh, as said, my background... I lived and worked in different different countries in Europe and um, Asia, and I, I was just in Japan about three two weeks ago. And surprise, surprise, I, I met people and companies involved within this sector. And uh, I'm also very proud to be a Finn in this sector because wherever I go, I got questions that how you guys manage your nuclear capability and your your maintenance and your disposal. And um, even to Japanese language, there is this word onkalo. It's becoming Japanese now, and, uh, and uh, it's quite funny, actually. When I was traveling there with the vice speaker, Mauri Pekkarin, and, and uh, we were, in every meeting, we ended up with the word onkalo. But just a few comments and points on my perspective, being from the legislative uh, how to say, legislative body, and what's the role of parliament, actually? What, what's the role of the regula regulator? What's the role of the European Union and the Finnish parliament? As you know, we just did the, um, 
the energy and climate strategy until 2030 in Finland. And it's very ambitious and it's of course the European strategy. How we work, how we implement and how we cooperate for the next 12 years in order to achieve all these very ambitious targets. So mainly we have been talking about renewables, let's be honest. And it's good. It's absolutely good that we are very ambitious uh, with regards to, to renewables. And I also work at the local level, regional level with uh, energy companies, so I have a pretty good touch base that how the companies work and how we achieve certain elements. But as you, as you well know, the role of politics has been pretty much just to curb the use of fossil fuels and promote the use of renewable sources in the past de decades. Most politicians, yes, let's be honest, they have been happy to dismiss nuclear energy from the toolkit of solutions in our global fight against climate change. For instance, yesterday in the parliament, we had a debate over the proposed government energy strategy. We talk, about, we talk a lot about climate change and the need of lower emissions, but barely mention nuclear energy. This is true and not even to mention the advanced nuclear energy, what's been your topic here. And despite the fact that in Finland nuclear energy is to provide some 40% of Finland's electricity by 2030. So personally I fi find it a little bit maybe troubling and um, my main question today is that, what if renewables alone won't be enough? What's going to happen? Even if we accept the, the logical conclusion following this idea, it will take time to convince people of this fact. Let's take Germany as an example. I was just there with the Economic Committee in, in, in Berlin. Germany hasn't been able to reduce its uh, energy related emissions in 20 years while pursuing a double goal of nuclear phase out of CO2 reductions. And whether it's deserved or not, the simple fact is that nuclear energy hasn't been particularly popular around the world. Therefore, it's very encouraging to be here and hear from you that advanced nuclear technologies have been developing so rapidly. To be honest, it was also a surprise to me. I believe that we need far more discussion like this about the possibilities of nuclear energy and not only about the problems. So I believe that Finland is one of the forerunners as far as the regulation, as far as the know-how, R&D, maintenance and so forth. Of course we have our, our pros and cons, as you know. But our nuclear expertise is acknowledged around the, around the world and the globe. And Finland will be, will be the first country to show that nuclear waste can be safely deposited. And I also understand that this waste might someday be used as a fuel for advanced reactors. But still I believe it is important to show that there is a solution that works today. But just my maybe ending remark is of course that it's important that new technologies are safe. And based on today's presentations, what I heard, especially from the chair, just quickly, before this, that it's clear that, that safety has been thoroughly considered. But luckily for everyone, it's not our job as politicians to determine whether new reactor designs are safe. For that, we have our safety regulators whose expertise is also highly respected both, both in Finland and, up, and abroad. 
But if I could hope something from you and the organizers, is that having said the role of Finland as a forerunner, our capabilities for exports, that we actually could do far, far more, far faster. We've been slow. It's not us, it's not the regulators to, 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 to say that be slower. I would like to see more actions to be taken at the global level. Um, I, would see, I would like to see more or less like global ecosystems around this business area, whether it's R&D, whether it's manufacturing of high-tech equipment or disposal. I mentioned Onkalo, how we scale that, how we make it. And of course, the service and maintenance. So basically four elements we have, and Finland has done before excellent ecosystems, for instance, around the ICT, we can do the same thing within this sector. Thank you. Yeah, you can uh, sit down and then watch the others. And okay, wonderful. Well, um, so I love being in Finland because uh, it's this, you hear so much about cooperation um, and what, how can we scale through cooperation? Um, and uh, I'd love to hear more about, you know, I'd love to discuss a bit further when we go into the panel discussion about um, the potential for international cooperation uh, at the EU level, at COP23, around regulatory harmonization. What more can the EU really do to create a level playing field for all low carbon technologies?